This channel is dedicated to helping you explore places with amazing landscapes, many of which are managed by the National Park Service. This became more difficult in October of 2022 when the Park Service implemented a regulation that makes posting park video or photos to social media a federal crime if that post generates revenue. But revenue for who? You or the social media company? It doesn't say. It's just not clear. You can get a permit, but it takes weeks and costs at least $100. I'll try to explain this overreaching regulation and the permitting process so that your kid's dance video doesn't give them a criminal record. This is the National Park Service website that attempts to explain it. This rule has only been in place since October 28th of 2022, when the National Park Service rescinded interim guidance during litigation, which it won on appeal by a 3-2 decision. So the Park Service returned to long-standing laws and regulations governing commercial filming in parks. However, those laws were written before the social media boom. They are clearly outdated today, and it'll make criminals out of millions of mostly young Americans. The next section on the website asks, when is a permit needed for commercial filming? Well, all the time. All commercial filming that takes place in a unit of the National Park System requires a permit. And you may not realize it, but there are hundreds of these. They're not just national parks and national monuments. The list is too great to list here. Basically, anything with the word national in front of it that's run by the Park Service is covered under this law. And this is how they define commercial filming. It means any electronic, magnetic, digital, or other recording of a moving image by a person, business, or other entity for a market audience with the intent of generating income. Examples include, but are not limited to, feature film, da 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 You have to go down to the next page to see where we get into trouble. Federal law requires a permit for all commercial filming, no matter the size of the crew or the type of equipment. So if you're using an iPhone, it applies to you. This includes individuals or small groups that do not use much equipment, but generate revenue by posting footage on websites such as YouTube and TikTok, and presumably every other form of social media. The thing that's not clear here is, so if I'm monetizing my YouTube channel, then this rule applies to me, because I generate revenue from it. Facebook and Instagram and TikTok are generating revenue from those posts. So even if I'm not monetizing it, because that company is monetizing it, does that mean it's commercial filming? It's just not clear. If that's the case, hundreds of thousands of people are going to be breaking federal law. And even if it's just people who are monetizing, it's still going to be several thousands and seems grossly unfair. In the next sentence, it says that the primary focus of the NPS, that's National Park Service, is on commercial filming that has a potential impact on park resources and visitors beyond what occurs from normal visitor use of park areas. So I guess what they're saying is they're not going to enforce it. Or maybe that's not what they're saying. Because at the end it says all filmers, no matter the size, must comply with all rules that apply in park areas just like other visitors. So if you're going to post to social media, when there's a possibility of getting income from that social media, you need to have a permit. It appears the federal government is saying that the little guy, or gal, cannot monetize their content without an expensive permit. But the big social media companies? They can. What about still photography? Well, here, once again, it's a little confusing. And basically it seems to say here you can shoot in the park as long as you're not promoting the sale of a product or service. So if you're showing something and say, hey, I really like that tour I just took, is that promoting a service? Or here's this hotel, I really like staying here, is that promoting that hotel? It's all very confusing and very dangerous. It is, after all, a federal crime. Well, let's assume that you need a permit. How do you get one? You have to go find the park that you're visiting. And go to their website and find the filming permit page, which for smaller sites can be very difficult. You may find an email address for the park's permit coordinator. This type of contact will get you the latest accurate information, assuming you get a reply. The Glacier site also has a link to six pages of instructions. I downloaded them. And a link to an application. And here's another problem. The NPS site and both of these downloads contain contradictory information. 
in part because the law is so new, the parks haven't been able to coordinate and get everything set up properly. I have a feeling this is a common problem throughout the park system. So I wrote an email. I did get a response that sorted out most of my questions. I learned that it's going to take at least 20 days to process my application. Once I submit it with a check for $125. And this fee may vary from park to park. But there are other fees. If my application is approved, there's also a $100 non-refundable permit fee. And there are more fees depending on the size of the chute. And here, both the NPS site and the Glacier sites agree on the pricing schedule. I'm a one-man crew, so there's no additional daily fee when shooting video. A one-man crew for still shoots isn't free. And again, that's only if you're using a model to help sell something. But wait, there's more. The permit coordinator's email also stated that they usually require a ranger to be with you on the shoot at the rate of $50 an hour. Now, if you're there for a week, that's going to be a pricey little shoot. I have trouble believing that they enforce that one for a one-man shoot, but apparently that's up to them. Needless to say, most of my YouTube videos don't make anywhere near enough just to cover the cost of these fees. And I know my videos help people plan their national park trips, and for some, the video is the only way for them to experience them. I know that these filming and photo fees are going to be a hardship for more than just we who make them. Some of them won't get a permit, and they'll get nailed by selective enforcement, and they will be charged with a federal crime. For simply posting something on TikTok, YouTube, or some other social media, is that something that should happen in our national parks? I understand the need to permit TV spots and movies. They have big crews. They should be monitored with a ranger. But a young couple with an iPhone, or a person with a camera and a tripod, well, there's no need for them to have a permit. If you agree, please Google NPS Filming Permit and send an email to some of these folks. It's actually hard to find the main email for the National Park System in Washington, so just let some of these folks know. Tell them that requiring a film and photo permit for those who just post to YouTube or social media, even if they're monetizing that video, is a bad, unfair, even discriminatory regulation. It only helps the big get bigger and prevents Americans of modest means from having a voice in our beautiful parks. After all, they belong to all of us. Okay, let's review. If you're monetizing your social media, you need one of these expensive permits. And you'll need one for each park that you visit. And if you're a poster who doesn't monetize your work, well, you probably still need a permit because the social media company certainly has the intention to generate revenue from your post. So everyone who posts a video on NPS property, whether it be a national forest, historic site, or a national park, should get a permit to avoid federal prosecution. Yes, it's a federal offense. But what we should really do is get them to change the law. The interim rule that was in place during the court case was a great law. It made sense. It was fair to everyone. If you had a large production, such as a TV commercial, TV show, or a movie, well, of course you needed a permit. That makes sense. They have large crews and lots of equipment. But a YouTuber or a TikTok dancer with an iPhone should not need an expensive permit to avoid federal prosecution. So how can you help? Well, send an email to the National Park Service, or maybe local media and even national media. And we need to do this before the busy travel season. This law needs to be changed before then, or the future of lots of our young people is going to be in danger.